Um, N. Wilson says, where should believers look for a wife or, a, or husband if not at a church building? Going to church is one of the best occasions to meet fellow single Christians. Uh, well, honestly, I've never seen that. Um, I've been there, college career, you know, group and stuff like this, and I've seen this thing of you get set up with people. Uh, they kind of like, you know, try to set up their young people together and things like this, and I oh, will get you a job, you know, and, you know, for the young women and stuff, and and we got a young man that you could meet, so we'll, we can have a new faithful tither and everything else and stuff like this. Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, personally, uh, I met my wife actually through being in ministry. I tried. I mean, I, I tried. I tried single Christian dating websites online. That failed. Thank the Lord. Uh, I remember this one. It was so funny. It was like a, recommended by James Dobson or something like this. And it was like, uh, you know, was it Christian Mingle or something like this? And they had this thing, like you fill out this survey and then they find like the perfect match for you. <laughs> you know, like your beliefs, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And they'll find a perfect match and it's got like 10,000 people, members of this thing. And I did this thing just, you know, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I was just like, Lord, I don't know. I'm just, I can't meet anybody to save my life, you know. So I filled this thing out and it came up with, zero results <laughs> out of like thousands and thousands of women you know it came up with nobody that was like me and so i was like okay that doesn't work too good and then i was like i went to different bath like cult buildings and it was like oh you know so and so could date you and stuff like this and it was like yeah i'm looking going uh no you know and I actually had a a woman contact me she had two young daughters that were single and she's like you know they're both around your age, and I'm going to talk to them and stuff like this, and I'll set it up and everything. And they both were like, he's too militant. You know, we don't want to marry that guy. So it didn't work. And uh, finally, I was just like, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to serve you, Lord. I'll just be an Apostle Paul kind of a guy. I'll be a single guy. I want to get married in the worst possible way, but I'm, not, I'm just not going to marry a woman that is going to wreck the ministry or get me out of the ministry. I'm going to wait. If I have to die a single man, I'm going to wait until the Lord brings me a wife that can stand with me in the ministry. And I was just like, you know, it's okay, you know, I'll just wait on you, Lord. And I just kind of forgot about it. I just kind of gave up looking. And I get this email from um, this young woman, and I find out that uh, through writing back and forth with her that she was single, and one thing led to another, and I have a wife. Who saved and who loves the Lord and is in the ministry with me. And I didn't find her at a Babel building. So uh, where should believers look for a wife or husband if not at a church building? Uh, well, if you get one from a church building, there's a good chance that she's going to be messed up doctrinally and uh, want to bring you into the church building because that's her social club. Um, I would say you're better off just uh, witnessing and... Um, Letting the Lord bring one into your life that you can lead to the Lord and then teach her the right way so she's not messed up with the new versions or anything else. Uh, that's what I recommend. Let the Lord be your matchmaker. Okay, Ocean View. Brian, what do you think about Gregory Miller? He seems very prideful in some of his videos. I know he stands for the local church. I don't see any videos of him preach, preaching against tithing. Just wanted your feedback. Um... Greg has some good stuff. Uh, definitely, I've learned some things from him. Um, uh, I do believe the Lord uses Greg. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say a whole lot. I don't want to rip on the guy and, and tear down another ministry because there's certainly very few that are standing anymore. And it just gets kind of wearying. Um, but Brother Greg and I def definitely disagree on some things. And um, we had a big blow up a long time ago on the gap theory issue and he was using some language that was not appropriate and uh, you know I'm, I'm certainly not a uh, um, effeminate little sissy that doesn't use some abrasive language once in a while I do I call people stupid and idiot and whatever else but I don't call people some you know kind of vile sexual type of, of names and stuff and Greg was using some language that I just 
it was upsetting, and I just I had to shut down the comments. I deleted his his comments, and I blocked him from the channel for a while. And we've kind of made peace since then. Um, but to me, it's just like Greg's got his thing going, and I got my thing going, and it's not like you know we got to be the you know the special tag team that goes out after the enemies and stuff. You know, uh, you're going to see that thing in the Pauline epistles where Paul and Barnabas did some great work together, and then they had a contention among them that was so sharp they parted company. And Barnabas left the Lord and went back to the world, and he was hanging out at bars last time you heard it. No, 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 no. Barnabas did his thing. He had his own ministry, and he went out and he did his thing. Paul went out and did his thing. Paul joined up with Silas then, you know, and they were out doing missionary work and stuff like that. Uh, you're going to have that in ministry. You're going to have uh, saved men that come together and they're working together and they're, they're kind of friends and th things like that, and then they'll have a contention sometimes. Why? Because the Lord wants them spread out. Uh, there was an old doctrine in, in the infantry back in World War I, and uh, I guess they still teach it actually, and that is that you're not to clump together. If you're rushing the enemy, don't all join together because the enemy can just lob a artillery right in on you and wipe out the whole company or whatever. You know, you don't want to do that. Spread out. You know, spread out. I mean, you can get a bullet hitting one soldier and going through him and hitting the guy behind him. Stay separate, you know. Um, give you a scripture on that one. Uh, let's see. If I can get this one here quickly. Romans 15. Uh, I'll start at uh, Romans 15, verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Okay. Um, Paul was saying, hey, you know, brother so-and-so is over here, and he's got that place over there taken care of. You know, brother Greg is down in Ohio. I'm here in Maine. I don't need to go down to Ohio and try to preach the gospel where Greg is at. All right, um, I don't need Greg coming up here and trying to preach the gospel here. You know, I look and I say, okay, he's got his thing going down there. He's, whatever issues he has, that's between him and God. Um, I'm up here preaching the gospel. Whatever issues I have, that's between me and the Lord. And so, you know, with Greg, I'm just like, I watch his stuff occasionally and things. He brings out some good stuff, and I respect him. And uh, I believe Greg is, is definitely 100% a saved man. Uh, what issues I have with him, you know, that's between him and the Lord. They'll, they'll sort that stuff out. But he's doing a work down there. I'm thankful that Greg has taken the stands against the easy believism stuff um, and many of the other things that he takes stands against. Uh, he's never once backed off on the King James Bible. I thank the Lord for him. So that's my stand on Greg Miller. Okay. Uh, Joseph, Genesis 50, 20 says, What do you do as a wife when a lost husband insists on fellowshipping with false Christian relatives? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the verse. That's in Ephesians, I think. Um, Ephesians 5, verse 11, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Um, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. 
uh, when a, when a husband is is hanging out with lost Christian professing, you know, false Christian relatives, I understand that. And uh, what you do in that time, um, yes, you have to be submissive to your husband as a woman. That's true. Um, but you have a relationship to the Lord as well. And what you'll find is if you start to talk about the things of the Lord, those relatives aren't going to want to be around you. Okay? And it's going to go back onto your husband. And he's going to have a decision to make. Either go with God and go with what you've been saying. And if they get offended at you speaking to them about the Bible version issue or whatever else, if he turns on you and says, hey, don't say that stuff. You're offending my relatives. He's going to answer to God for that. Okay? And you say, am I wrong for telling them the truth? You know? And if he says, well, I don't know, or whatever. I mean, if he's really truly saved and, and wants to serve the Lord, the Lord's going to reveal that stuff to him. He's going to feel vexed by... You know, that unfruitful works of darkness that his relatives are into. You know, and you just simply, you know, I, I've long held on to the belief that the best place for a Christian to be is on the front lines of the battle. That's the safest place to be as a Christian. And what I mean by that is be as fanatical as you possibly can. Uh, lukewarm Christians make God sick. And the best thing that you can do is not be purposefully offensive, not be a jerk about things, and just try to pick fights with people. I'm not saying that. Uh, we're not supposed to strive. We're to be gentle unto all men, have to teach patient and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, Second Timothy chapter 2, towards the end of the chapter. Uh, that's there. But um, we should be not afraid to speak the truth. Uh, speak it in love, but... When you get around these lost relatives, just start saying, you know, um, you know, the professing Christians and stuff say, hey, I got a question for you, isn't it? You know, or here's a good one. Uh, just say, you know what? It's interesting. I've been looking into this thing. I mean, show up with a, a Bible version issue book or something. Show up with a David Daniels book and just be like, hey, do you have that NIV? You got to see this. They take these verses out and stuff and, you, and start showing them verses that are taken out of the NIV and stuff and say, you know, it's amazing how these you know modern churches are doing this wicked stuff and everything else. And you'll see them looking down at the ground and everything else. Now, if your husband's saved, he's going to see that and he's going to say, I have to make a decision one way or the other. Got to work that stuff out. So that, that would be my advice to you on that. Um, just stand for the truth. Be, be militant for God's truth. And the Lord will separate what's going on there. Uh, if your husband is not genuinely saved, if he's a kind of rotten individual himself, well then the Lord's going to make things happen there to either get him saved or you know, get him out of your life. Be quite frank with you. If he is saved, then the Lord's going to convict him. Next we have